Hello, all you weirdos. Jim here. And while I can't say that Chip Zdarsky's Batman run has been for everybody, I mean, I can't even say it's been for me. I think most of us can agree that any sort of momentum, any sort of hype that Chip Zdarsky had going in this book was derailed by two major factors. And I do mean, of course, Night Terrors with a K and Gotham War. Night Terrors with a K, two-month hiatus, July and August. I like to call that Summerween, where we had the spooky story going on, but what it did was shut down almost all of the dawn of DC books, including this Batman book, which then not only derailed the hype and momentum of Batman, but also the dawn of DC in general. And if that wasn't, you know, the stupidest idea ever, We end up getting even more stupid when we come out of the Night Terrors event and DC decides to have Batman, the big book crossover with Teeny Howard's Catwoman book to give us the debacle uh, that was Gotham War. And Gotham War, pretty much the French have a great word for it. Garbage is what that was. And really, if you want to have a recipe to derail anything, the number one ingredient is always going to be Teeny Howard. But luckily, We get to put all of that in the rear view. Chip Zdarsky is back. He's able to tell his own story. So we come pumping in with what is a Joker story. Suddenly, I don't get it. I Maybe I do. I don't know. I never saw that coming, but here we are. We're going to get into this. This is Batman number 140. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Ah, Batman number 140 is written by Chip Starsky with art by Jorge Jimenez. It is Mind Bomb Part 2. Mind Bomb just reminds me of Chris Angel. I don't like that. I don't like Chris Angel. He scares me. But here we are. And with this hype that the Chip Starsky Batman book did have, whether you like it or not, stuff like Fail Save Zornar, even the multiversal jump back and forth with the Gotham without a Batman, There was something going on, and that did get derailed then, like I said, by Night Terrors and the Gotham War. But there are ways, there are age-old rules to get hype, to get things going in a book. And the number one way to do that has always been put a gorilla on the cover, right? Uh, Can we do that, baby? And really, if you want to do that, put the gorilla in space, and now we're talking. Now we got a hit on our hands. I know that's not going to happen. The other thing, though, that they might want to think of is when a book is floundering, you add Batman. Batman is a guest star. That always ends up increasing the hype and the sales and everything because it's Batman. Oh, this is a Batman book, so you really can't do that. Or can you? Because Chip Starsky does end up doing it in a crazy way. But really, if you want to get a Batman book, you want to get hype back, you want to get a push, you add the Joker. That's what you do. now. Usually when you do that, the Joker has been away for a little. Usually the Joker, you know, when he has a big story, goes away for a year or so, and then he, boom, he comes back. The problem is, is that DC has been a bit desperate lately. And so because of that, they've had a Joker book going. He hasn't been going away. And to me, it feels like the Joker is a bit oversaturated at this moment. And really, if I had a time machine... A lot of things that you can change with the time machine, but me personally, I'd change one thing and one thing only. I would go back and make sure that that Matthew Roosevelt Joker, the man who stopped laughing, never happened. That's it. I know that people will think, Jim, there's so many more important things to change if you had a time machine. I, I disagree. That is number one on my list. Then we'll go back and, you know, maybe help people and things like that. But really, help me out by getting rid of that Joker. The man has stopped laughing. And because of that, we've had a year of a really bad Joker book that went nowhere slow. And now Joker hits the bat. It doesn't feel special. It doesn't feel like it has as much of that push going. But it still is the Joker. It's still going to get people involved. But there's more. As I said, there's that clever thing that Chip Zdarsky's doing. And you do end up having a bunch of Batman Zora and R's of the mind. So we can kind of think that Batman is guest starring in his own book a bit, but there's also something that happens in this issue, something that actually gives me hope 
that there is that light at the end of the tunnel. We can get some things going. And really, this really feels like by the end of this issue, when we get to that cliffhanger, that I'll try not to spoil completely. But when we get to that, that really feels like that boom. We're done with Night Terrors. Boom. We're done with Gotham War. We're going forward. Let's get stuff happening here. Thank God that we do get to that point. Now, if you have been reading Sadarsky's Batman run, you know that Zoran R has been gradually taking over Batman's mind, making him a bit more violent and unhinged. And while that has led to not so great things like putting a mind whammy on Jason Todd, Chip Sadarsky shows in this issue there is an upside as well. And that upside is watching Batman beat the living crap out of the Joker. Pretty cool. You don't get to see that tons, right? This unhinged Batman. Well, they've been saying it for quite some time. This actually starts to really feel like it's setting in. I can actually see that whole play. And yeah, it's kind of cool to watch Batman while they say he's unhinged. I just like seeing Batman beat the crap out of the Joker, but it doesn't stop there. Because while Batman is putting the smackdown on the clown prince of crime in the real world, he's also fighting off the Zorn R's of the multiverse in his head. So what this issue really boils down to are two fights. You end up having the fight in the mind with the Zorn R Batman, and then you also have Batman fighting Joker in the real world. Now, some of this might be confusing to people. I'm hoping that most of the people listening to this have been reading the run up until now. But for those who haven't, I'm going to explain a little of how we end up getting those Zoranars in his mind. Here's the thing. The Penguin faked his own death to make Batman look like a murderer, which then triggered Failsafe, a robot designed by Zoranar, to stop Batman if he ever crossed that line. Failsafe attacked Batman and anyone who tried to help him, and after falling from the moon, Batman uploaded empathy into Failsafe, who then shot Batman with a mysterious gun that sent Batman to a Gotham without a Batman, where Bruce Wayne ran into a Joker who wasn't the Joker, but wanted to be the Joker, and then finally escaped with the help of a ton of multiversal Batman, but while connecting with those Batman, was infected by the multiversal Zoranars that he is fighting with now in his head. And oh yeah, he also got a fake hand from the Dark Knight Rises Batman. That seemed important at first, which probably will again at some point. But hey, easy peasy. All of that makes complete sense, right? Yeah. So here we are. And a lot of people did criticize that whole multiversal Batman saves Batman as kind of member berry stuff. That was, again, the issues right before Night Terrors. And I guess... That does continue here. You do kind of get that bit of member berry still, but eh, it kind of feels a lot cooler seeing Batman beat the crap out of the Zora and our counterparts here than what we had in the multiverse. And it's a good thing because that's really all you're going to get in this issue. It's a fight issue through and through until pretty much the end. And I'm sure that the ending will be spoiled by a bunch of people. I don't like spoiling things. I don't really like to come in and be the guy to say, hey, by the way, the cliffhanger is this. And oh, my God, you're never going to be. I like to let people, you know, find out by themselves. I mean, I could fail, but it's safe to say it is pretty cool cliffhanger who ends up showing up at the end. Right. So Batman number 140 looks great. There's plenty of action. The whole issue is two extended fight scenes. But when the cliffhanger hits, it feels like Chip Zdarsky has finally been able to start telling his own story after months of utter, utter nonsense. I'm going to give this issue a 7 out of 10, and that even can go higher. That can retroactively go higher as we go on, as long as the momentum keeps going, as long as Chip Sadarsky keeps building up the momentum that this story is setting up with the cliffhanger, and I hope that he does. I hope the next bunch of issues just keep going, because whether or not you like Chip Sadarsky, whether or not you like Batman, DC needs Batman to do well. DC needs Batman to be a big book. When you get Batman hitting on all cylinders, as they say, that then allows a little wiggle room to get some other books that you may actually love or you may actually be begging for. The only way those things are going to happen is if Batman is leading the charge and getting all that moolah. That's what Batman needs to be doing, getting the moolah. But that's that. I hope everybody enjoyed 
this review. I do want to mention that I have been doing reviews. I've been kind of testing and tweaking things, and I've had a bunch of reviews from our podcast and other things that I do, but with other people doing them with me. And I wanted to see how those would do. Now I'm going to do the solo reviews, see how those do. We'll put it all in the lab. We'll mix it up, kind of, you know, do some testing, and then we'll see what's going on. What I'm actually saying is I'd like to know from everybody listening how they like the reviews, what they like, what they want. Do you like the longer reviews with a bunch of people and me talking, or do you just like the shorter, not concise, because I'm sure this one really went off the rails. It's like 3 a.m. right now, and I haven't slept in two days, so forgive me. But if you like these type of deals, let me know as well in the comments. But also, let me know what you thought of Batman number 140. Again, I talked about a lot of things when really this issue is just a couple fights, but looks great i mean the art is stupendous and you get that big cliffhanger the villain that a lot of people were wondering if he'd ever return he did we're here let's go let me know what you think in the comments but that's that and with all that i will talk to you all later you are all weirdos weird science is the revolution weird science is the revolution